Today on the CTV News at 5, the summer job market for students is already getting tight. Plus, shocking discovery. I'm Amanda Berry. I've been on the news. How three missing women were tracked down 10 years after they vanished. And a new species of dinosaurs are discovered to have roamed southern Alberta. CTV News with Jackie Scandlebury. Good afternoon. Many college and university students have finished writing exams and are now getting ready to start pounding the pavement looking for that summer job. But some might find it more difficult this year. Many nonprofit organizations says that they won't have job openings because the province has cut funding for the Summer Temporary Employment Program, commonly known as STEP. Terry Boat reports. For 5th on 5th Youth Services, this is the beginning of the busiest time of the year, when university and college kids have wrapped up classes and started looking for summer jobs. We expect that next week we'll get really, really busy with the students who have been trying to find employment on their own and then maybe aren't as successful and are going to come in looking for help. But Executive Director Gail McKenzie says if the job board is any indication, it's going to be tougher this year. The sudden cancellation of the popular STEP program means the nonprofit sector won't be hiring as many young people this summer. Yeah, there's fewer postings here. It was absolutely huge. Tanya Wolford knows how important the STEP program was to the Lethbridge Food Bank. They've traditionally hired STEP students to manage major fundraisers like the annual golf tournament. I imagine all of the nonprofits that did participate in the program are feeling pretty pinched. The provincial government says it understands that suspending the STEP program will present some challenges to community partners, especially the nonprofit groups. In a posting on the Human Services website, Minister Dave Hancock says all departments were asked to ensure they were using resources as effectively as possible. He says the ministry is placing its funding priorities on helping those in greatest need, vulnerable Albertans including children at risk, adults with disabilities and the homeless. But it means nonprofit groups have had to make adjustments. The YWCA has been forced to eliminate one of the positions they'd normally have over the summer. The impact is more than we just don't have a few of the summer student positions, but the impact is more about what happens to the nonprofit sector in the future. Executive Director Christine Cassie says the STEP program helped introduce and recruit students to the nonprofit sector. Others say it also helped students get the skills they need for employment opportunities in the future. Terry Vote, CTV News, Lethbridge. The government says it will be working with the nonprofit sector to see how it can best support the workforce needs of youth, but those affected say the impact is already showing up at their workplace and on the job board. When we were talking today, average temperatures, you said around 17 degrees, but the lowest daytime high over the next number of days, 19 degrees. Yeah, we are looking at a warm uh, stretch of days ahead of us, Jackie. We do have still Friday on tap for seeing some showers, but we had a chance of showers for tomorrow as well. But those as of right now have been eliminated. So Friday is still the target day for some shower activity, but still very mild temperatures. And Sunday, if we hit the temperature we're expecting to hit, we will set a record here in Lethbridge for record highs. But I'll tell you all the warm details coming up in a couple of minutes. We will stay tuned. Thank you, Dory. Three young women held captive for a decade are back with their families tonight. They made a desperate dash for freedom yesterday, escaping a home in Cleveland where they had been held as sex slaves. As Andy Rosengen reports, their families never gave up hope they'd come home. In front of Amanda Berry's home, a visual outpouring of love. Friends and family members have gathered there, rejoicing at having the girl stolen from them as a teen return to them as a brave young mother. Everyone's in tears, you know, and trying to keep it all together. We're trying to be strong and supportive for her. We're going to welcome that little girl into our family, just like she was. we were there. Yesterday, Barry's pleas for help were first heard by a neighbor, Charles Ramsey. So we had to kick open the bottom. Luckily on that door, it was aluminum. It was cheap. And she climbed out with her daughter. Barry then called 911. I've been kidnapped and I've been missing for 10 years and I'm, I'm here, I'm free now. 
She informed police there were two more women still inside, Gina De Jesus and Michelle Knight. They actually came out of the house once the police approached and uh, got into the uh, got into the residence. Now under arrest, former school bus driver Ariel Castro, who owns the home, and his two brothers, Pedro and O'Neill, all in their 50s. I'm sorry because it, it, it was, the damage was done by uh, a member of my family. Neighbors who know Castro are stunned. I thought he was a nice guy. Um, he was loving to all the kids in the neighborhood. Never had any kind of suspicion. The three women are out of the hospital now and police say they're doing well. Police say they have started to talk to the women about what they went through, but they're moving cautiously given the trauma that they faced. Andy Rosen for ABC News, Cleveland. Back to news in southern Alberta. A general surgeon shortage at Chinook Regional Hospital is coming to an end. Alberta Health Services has recruited a pair of new surgeons to join their staff. They'll be relocating to Lethbridge over the summer and are expected to be in place by September. There hasn't been any interruption to emergency service and don't expect any before the new surgeons are in place. HS credits their group of surgeons for managing the shortage while they work to fill the void. Funding for the Exhibition Park redevelopment project in Lethbridge has been delayed to the second four-year cycle of the Capital Improvement Plan. Lethbridge City Council's Finance Committee has decided to give conditional support to the project for the next council, who will review the latter half of the CIP. Exhibition Park is asking the city for $25 million to help fund their major redevelopment and expansion project. Alderman Joe Morrow says he believes it's a good project for the city, but not one that's shovel-ready. That leaves the $68 million the city has to spend on capital projects intact for the 2014 cycle. Now, one project that won't wait for consideration is expansion to the Lethbridge Regional Police Headquarters. They've already spent over $2 million getting the project started. Their request is for over $24 million, and that includes expanding the building and additional parking for staff as well. It will be considered for 2014. Council is debating all the capital projects throughout today. Experts now say there may be no need to close the Yates Center for a full year as earlier feared. The building is facing a $6.4 million upgrade that includes a major overhaul of the outdated electrical and sound systems. While it will take weeks to complete the upgrades, officials now say the work could be scheduled for a few days at a time around theater bookings. Council also agreed to move ahead with previously approved projects, including the North Lethbridge Regional Park and the Crossings Ice Complex. Well, high school exams are going high tech. The province will soon let students write their diploma exams online. Officials say the move is going to increase opportunities for students to write the exams when they're not in cities. They say it will also let them more effectively demonstrate skills like problem solving, critical thinking and communication. There will be five times a year that students will be able to take the exams instead of the two times a year currently. It will be a pilot project that starts in the fall of 2014 by 2017. All diploma exams will be offered electronically. Police officers spend most of their time trying to bag criminals, but today they were helping to bag groceries. Look, he's a big shelter, eh? Officers in uniform spent the day at Sobeys Scenic Square helping customers carry out their groceries. They also put on a barbecue to raise awareness and support for athletes attending the Special Olympic Summer Games in Devon, Alberta in June. Among those donating their time were off-duty officers, members of the downtown policing unit and school resource officers from the LRPS. Organizers say it's not only for a worthwhile cause, but the public also gets to see police officers in a different light. I hope so. I know we've had a lot of people come in today and we're, we're shocked by us standing here, but uh, they asked what's going on and we're here to, to raise awareness and show that our support for Special Olympics as well as the community. Members of the Lethbridge Police Service also support the Special Olympic athletes through a polar plunge and other events. Their next major fundraiser, a police half marathon September the 14th. Well, a new species of dinosaurs about the size of a large German shepherd dog has been discovered in southern Alberta. The well-preserved fossils were found near Milk River on Roy Audette's cattle ranch. Scientists say the creature roamed on two legs about 85 million years ago. They've named it the Acrotholus for the dome-shaped bone mass on its head. Now, it's believed that those bones were used to attract mates and possibly to engage in head-butting battles with romantic rivals, the same way that many mammals use horns or antlers today. The research was published in the journal Nature Communications. Well, this week's Farm.TV takes us inside one of the highlights of the main equine event education and trade fair. 
the Trainers Challenge. Mike LeBlanc introduces us to a groundbreaking horse breaker. The Trainers Challenge is a unique opportunity to see three trainers put their skills to work to show the public their abilities and methods of training an unbroken horse. This year, one of the competitors was Wileen Wilson. It's not every day that a woman can stand up against other men competitors, if you will. So I have a lot to represent. I got a lot of stereotypes to break, right? So I got to be prepared and ready. And, if, and I said it last night, you know, these, these guys, they have good horses. And uh, I have a little tougher horse than they do. So I have to really prove myself that uh, I can handle a bad horse or a bad situation. Wileen has been around horses all her life. At a very young age, I had a mom who was my instructor, my coach, my mentor. And she used to put me on everything under the sun. If it had hair on it, I was riding it. And she'd say, go and fix that problem. She'd never, ever let me make an excuse. And I'm so grateful because now, as an adult, uh, there's never a situation I don't think I can handle. And I, I, I don't make an excuse for myself. I say, you know what, I've been here. I've practiced this. I have the tools and the knowledge to know what to do when something goes wrong. Farm TV is brought to you by DA Building Systems. On to the financial markets where the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed above 15,000 points for the first time ever. Straight ahead, Dory's got more on the great weather ahead.